Hey everybody, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and I'm joined again by Tom Peterson from <laughs> NVIDIA. And we're going to be talking about some of the new Pascal stuff. So the, the most interesting item to me here, at least, is overclocking. It's changed a lot in the oh, interface. Yeah. Yeah. So how has it changed? Well, it's pretty exciting. You know, when, when you look at overclocking, what you're trying to do is extract margin that is built into the design to account for variation of games or variation of silicon or variation of boards. And the way you want to figure this out is you want to test uh, your chip running a real game and figure out if it's stable at a particular frequency. Now, GPU Boost 2, which is on Maxwell, only allowed you to add a fixed frequency offset to your stock voltage frequency curve. What we've done with Pascal is said, you know, we're leaving a lot of headroom on the table. Uh, what if we actually, instead of having a fixed offset applied across the whole curve, we can now let users do a frequency offset for each point of the v uh, voltage frequency curve. So what that allows you to do is really get much, much closer to what I call the theoretical horizon of your your GPU performance, right? So it's think of it as if you had to have one frequency offset, somewhere along that curve you'd fail because it's linear. Now by allowing it to be deformed to match your real GPU, you can get higher performance. Now we've also, since we've gotten a lot more programmable on how you can overclock, we've enabled something called an OC scanner. Right. And now an OC scanner is another tool um, that will kind of generate this per frequency, I'm sorry, per voltage frequency offset for you. And it does it by automatically running tests over and over and over uh, locking to a particular voltage and then increasing the frequency offset until a point of failure. Now NVIDIA's added a whole bunch of stuff um, to allow that tool to run efficiently without locking up your system. So you're doing things like comparisons of values in the frame buffer, trying to figure out, hey, has the GPU had a miscompare rather than a hard crash? Because that's a much better way to fail, right? So the OC scanner is, think of it as the engine that's now testing your GPU against a particular workload, and then it's writing the results of that scan into that manual overclocking uh, table. And how long does the scan take to complete? An it's app? completely up to the uh, individual AIC that's doing the tool, but we've recommended that it's configurable. So you can configure how long do I test each point, what is the range of you know frequencies that I want to test. So if you only want to look for, say, between uh, 150 and 300 millivolts, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 300 megahertz of frequency, you can configure that in your tool. Right. And you can also configure how big of a step do I take on the frequency. If you got more time, you run the test longer, and you take smaller steps and you'll get a more accurate curve. So if, if I'm an enthusiast who enjoys overclocking, yeah. it's, it sounds like this tool is, is taking my job away from me. Well, what, yeah. How do you how continue do enabling the enthusiast? Well, the, the enthusiast still has all the normal uh, tweaks that they had before where they can get in there and dial their own thing. And the OC scanner is, is, is going to be limited because effectively it's, it's going to run one application. It's not going to be running a whole bunch of dip, different applications. Um, but again, I think humans are going to end up doing a little better job kind of tweaking it up there for their particular particular use and, and they're going to enjoy it. We do have three modes of the overclocking now. Before we just had that fixed offset. Right. Now you can do fixed offset or you can do a linear interpolation. So you know, it turns out that the voltage frequency offset capability increases or decreases based on where are you in the curve. So by having a linear uh, interpolation, you can actually extract more performance. And finally, there's that manual mode that you could get in there and like plug in every single voltage and frequency point, or you can use that as sort of the target of an OC scanner. Very cool. And then before we go here, SMP. Oh, can you define that for us? I can. Uh, SMP stands for Simultaneous Multi-Projection. And what it's all about is, if you remember, I was talking about uh, the world that's created in geometry uh, and then cr uh, mapping that world to a two-dimensional screen. That process is called projection. And uh, it's been done forever onto a single screen or a single projection because really that's all we had. But what's actually changed is now you people have surround configurations and, and there's VR, and effectively the screens that we all are interacting with are becoming more complex. So what this technology allows us to do, uh, think of it as transforming the projection that we look into when we're trying to calculate pixels. And that by transforming that geometry, we can match what's really happening with your displays. It removes distortion, it can improve efficiency, and it's just, I mean, it's just like an, an obvious thing to do. At the end of the day, 
ways. You can imagine things like lenticular displays and a, uh, augmented reality and even, even uh, circular displays that you may walk into someday. And if you do that, what you really want to be able to do is look around anywhere and see the correct projection. And that, that type of environment will um, require continued innovation on projection manipulation and uh, we're definitely heading that way. And does that work? So obviously VR is in there as a focus point. Yeah. Uh, what about curved screens like the ultra wides? Yeah, I mean we support 16 different uh, transforms for a single uh, view uh, uh, projection. So that means you could sort of slice up a curved screen into 16 different slices and approximate that that curved surface. Now it is an in-game thing, so uh, it's up to game developers to uh, take advantage of the, the new con new capability provided by MV API. Right. Yeah. So to learn more about this stuff, as always, links in the description below. <laughs> and uh, by by this point, we should have all the basic information you need online yeah. on SMP. Yeah. I so. think you're going to be. Uh, <laughs> I think you're going to be blown away by Pascal when you get it home. So as always, <laughs> <laughs> check back for that because we will have more of it. But thank you, Tom, for yeah, joining it's me. Great to see you again, yeah. And we'll see you all next time. Okay. Take care, guys.